Today we're going to remove the valve block of your hydro blend proportioner. Um, the first step that we're going to do is uh, remove this black cover right here. And it just takes a standard screwdriver and we're just going to loosen these screws up. Pop those out. Remove the cover. I like sticking the screws back into the reversing rod bracket just so that way I don't lose them, especially out in the field. Once they hit the ground, you never know where they go. So now the next thing we're going to do is begins we're going to replace this valve lock. We're going to we might as well look at this poppet and key assembly right here in your outlet fitting because that has an old ring on there and we want to make sure this is clean, clear of debris, no buildup, solidified chemical, anything like that, any obstructions. So to remove that, you can use a needle nose pliers or you can fabricate yourself a little tool like this that we fabricated up but for out in the field the needle nose pliers works real good so I'm just going to remove that take a nose squeeze on her give it a twist counterclockwise Wiggle it, pull it out. As you can see, there's a spring on there, so you want to make sure you don't lose that spring. Reach in with your needle nose, and you can grab the poppet, pull that out, or you can just, if you have the pump not on feet, you can just tip it, and it'll pop, come right out. And then what I would do is I would ins inspect this hole, inspect in here, and see if there's any kind of buildup gunk whatever just to make sure that that is clear and free of grime because this o-ring sits inside of there and that's what seals your chemical your chemical that's coming through your outlet fitting that's what seals it from your valve block and your water motor which you don't want chemical going into there at all and you can replace this too. You just take your fingers, pull it off. You know, you look at it, see if it's swollen, see if it's cut, anything like that. And if it is, just replace it. And now we're going to remove this outlet fitting off of the valve lock. And these quarter inch bolts, we're just going to take 7 16 wrench, loosen them, they're snug. Turns, back one here, loosen it, couple turns, spin them out. This one's a little harder to get at. To get this back bolt out, you gotta pull it out and you gotta kind of rotate it and it'll come right out. Or if it stays, if you can't get it out, just leave it in there. It, will, it won't hurt anything. Then you're gonna remove your outlet fitting. You're gonna twist it, it's back and forth, and gradually give it a pull out. It's gonna be snug. And pop it out. The reason why I don't like to take this injection tubing off and these nuts off because they're a compression type nut, so fitting in there and it clamps on that hose. So when you, you know, you back that nut off and you go back, you're going to probably over tighten it. And if it's, which can cause a leak. So I would just leave it if it's not 
cause any issues, you just leave it and just pull the outlet fitting off. It's much easier. It just it takes a lot less time, and it, you just have less chances for leaks forming or anything like that or damaging something. So now what you're going to do is you're going to remove this spring off of this toggle lever assembly right here. To do that, you can use a pick, get underneath, pull, pry it off. A, you know, a standard screwdriver, really small screwdriver, you can do it. You can get in here, pry out, pop it off that way. I have a spring removal tool, and I'm just going to take it off of that myself. So I'm going to hook my spring removal tool. See if I can show you this. Here's you and your spring. I'm going to hook that in there like so. Give it a pull. Pull up. Unhook my tool. I like to remove the spring all the way. You don't necessarily have to. Just for assembly, it's easier. I just pop this spring off of this brass bushing in here. And I remove it. If this hook, this hook right here, is a little snug on this brass bushing, you can just take a standard screwdriver or a pick and you can just pry it off. Gently, you know, this is a plastic part, so you don't want to be reefing on it or bending bending this piece to to remove it. It it should just it'll just pop right off. It'll, it's not on there really that stiff. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the valve lock. I'm going to remove all four of these screws right here. I'm going to slide my actuating arm and reversing rod over like that and bring up my screwdriver back these screws up and now you can remove your valve block from your water motor like that. Now you can see, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but this o-ring shifted a little when I removed it. So I'm just going to put that back in there and they sit recessed into your end plate. There's a recess there for those o-rings. You don't want to keep those in them recesses. Reassembly. So now I'm going to remove my screws out of my reversing rod back bracket. You got to lift straight up, tilt it to the right. You have to kind of move that arm, tilt it, and up. And since you're at doing this, you might as well as inspect these bumpers and Look for cracks, see if they're worn, if they have maybe softened up over time, heat, um, you know, chemical attack, anything like that. Uh, you should replace them because they definitely need to be there for the timing of the pump and uh, it saves on this toggle lever right here. So, what I'm going to do is, after I remove this, I'm going to check to see what my problem was. If, if the unit wasn't leaking and uh, all of a sudden just stopped working, you know, I'm going to pry it, apply a little pressure right here on the end of this toggle lever and rotate it. Now, for some reason, if it only rotates a little or it's stalled, and you can't move it at all, then something is either blocking the holes, blocking the valve internally. Like you can look through each one of these ports. You can look through these ports here, here, 
and see if there's anything blocking. You know, you can sometimes chemo, you know, uh, pop it fails and there's chemical that gets in there or sometimes, uh, you know, water quality is bad. So there's a lot of, you know, iron in your water or maybe there, the water isn't filtered. So there's mineral deposits that build up. It could be numerous things, you know, um, but yeah, you can just rotate that. If it feels good and it's not, and it wasn't leaking before you took it apart, then it should be good to go. But like I said, if it does feel gravelly or sandy when you're turning it, like metal grinding on metal, that is definitely not a good sign. So, so now what we're gonna do is uh, replace this unit back onto the pump. I'm going to take my reversing rod bracket. I'm going to slide that on first. Tilt it. And slide it on my two little posts there, which I probably could show you those posts. I don't know if you can see them, but there's two a post here and a post here. That's what locates on this hole and this hole. Slide it on. Set it on top there. Take my screws. So, so now I am going to reassemble my valve block onto my water motor. I'm gonna check these O-rings, make sure they're in my counter borders there. Looks good. Those screws will line up with those brass inserts. Down nice and easy. And I would inspect it to make sure you got it right. You know, give it a look. You know, everything's lining up real nice before you go screwing it down. Because even once you screw it down, if that seal's not in that o ring groove, you will pinch it and it will leak. Now you're going to tighten your screws. I just go from one side to the next and I don't tighten them all the way down. I get close and then I move to the next one. Okay, so I'm gonna snug that up. We have it set at about eight to 12 inch pounds, you know, you can go a little more, you know, you just screw it down until it's tight and it'll be, it'll be fine. So that should be pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. I mean, you don't want to over tighten, but now you're going to take your actuating arm and you're going to line it up back level with your cage here. So you're going to bring it back up and take your reversing rod and you're going to slide it between these two points right here. Like that. Those two little guides. Now you're going to take your 290 or your spring again. Slide it through your reversing rod. Let's see if I can show you guys. Get a good view there. And get it around that brass bushing. And you, now you can use your pick or, you know, you could use a needle nose pliers to do this. Pull that over, slide it down inside that groove on that bushing right there. There's a groove in there. You'll, you'll see it. And that is all reassembled to that point. Now you're going to want to replace your outlet fitting. Now, one thing, one thing before I do that, 
is we use a product on our O-rings and it's called Parker Super Olu and it's a silicone based product and it really is nice for assembling O-rings because when you go to apply this back in like a so, go to re return that, when you push that into that hole, you got two edges there so that's going to you know, put pressure on that O-ring and it's going to make it a little tough and you could cut a seal but if you're not careful so you just want to take a little bit of this take a little bit of this O-ring lube put a little on your finger smear it on the O-ring just takes a little and take a whole lot And you're going to take your outlet fitting body, give it a little twist, pops right in. Easy. Not a, not a problem at all. So now we're going to stick our bolts back in. And you're going to tighten them up. 7 16 wrench again. Snug. So now you're going to want to put your poppet back into your outlet fitting. That poppet will go all the way down towards the bottom. You're going to want to take your spring, your spring, and your key. You want to slide it in there, get it into your poppet, make sure it's in the poppet. And take your needle nose again. There will be pressure on it when you have it, so you're going to have to hold on to it with your finger. And then you just take that, turn your key so it's horizontal there. And it's already assembled to that point. Now you just take your screws out for your cover. These can be a little bit tricky at times, but once you get them lined up, they'll go right in. Started. Started. Now on the back of this cover, you're going to want to kind of Give that a little push out right there and suck it down so it's not. Make sure not to over tighten those, just, just go down until it's snug. And that's all you gotta do. And now you have fully reassembled. Put a new valve lock on your hydro blend proportioner.